I'm Daniel Wilson, and today I'll be introducing some of my work on close formation flight for unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs. This is the motivation, autonomous airborne docking for UAV refueling, recharging, and payload transfer. It's an exciting capability for UAVs because there are no limitations imposed by a human pilot, so UAV range and persistence is theoretically unlimited. This image shows a recent effort by Northrop Grumman, NASA, and DARPA in pursuit of this capability. This really highlights the importance. But before we can think about docking, accurate and reliable close formation flight must be solved. And this is what this presentation will address. In a recent video, I explained how Simulink could be used to rapidly develop, simulate, and implement guidance, navigation, and control algorithms for a single UAV using Simulink's automatic code generation tool. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how the modular nature of Simulink can be used to accelerate the development of a multi-UAV system by duplicating and building upon existing modules. After duplicating the UAVs, we add a wireless communications link, an infrared camera at the front of the follower, and infrared LED markers on the leader. Vision is used to aid the onboard sensors to achieve the high accuracy requirements that are not possible with GPS alone. Each UAV contains a custom-built autopilot that's capable of fully autonomous operation. This module is responsible for the low-level guidance, navigation, and control and is able to accept external commands. Even though this is not standard hardware, nor officially supported, the Simulink-based algorithms are able to run on board. Each UAV also contains a formation flight computer, which handles communication with the other aircraft and runs the Simulink-based formation guidance and navigation algorithms. The follower's formation flight computer receives sensor data from the leader's autopilot wirelessly, sensor data from the local autopilot, and pixel locations of all the observed infrared markers from the camera. The output a bank angle, altitude, and airspeed commands that are sent back to the follower's autopilot. Any embedded processing hardware can be used as a formation flight computer, provided the appropriate interfaces exist and the computational power is sufficient. The vision system was able to be prototyped in MATLAB in real time and using the actual hardware. Image processing algorithms were able to be rapidly implemented, tested, and then evaluated for performance and efficiency, then refined and tested again. The yellow squares indicate the location of the detected markers. Behind a successful implementation of complex autonomy is a comprehensive simulation that's representative of the problem. By utilizing Simulink's modularity, we're able to duplicate our existing single UAV simulation and create individual subsystems that represent the leader and follower autopilots. Simulink can then automatically convert from the simulation environment to the embedded code. A new block is now created to simulate the formation flight computer, which again runs on board the embedded hardware. We now add blocks to simulate inter-vehicle communication and the infrared vision system. Display blocks are used to provide feedback to the user. Finally, we can run the simulation and test the system in a variety of scenarios. During the simulation, we can visualize the state of the vehicles using a 3D animation tool at the bottom right. The plot at the top right shows the output of the simulated infrared camera. Once we're satisfied with the algorithm performance, implementation simply requires a few mouse clicks to generate the embedded code and compile for the embedded hardware before launch. And as we see from this airborne infrared video, the output is remarkably similar to simulation. To simplify analysis, an RGB camera was mounted with a similar orientation and position to the infrared camera. During these flights, the lead aircraft was commanded to follow a racetrack shaped path at a fixed altitude and airspeed. The follower was commanded to rendezvous and maintain formation six meters behind the leader. To the best of our knowledge, these are the closest autonomous formation of flights that have occurred. But we've flown even closer. And closer still. After the flight, we're able to replay the mission in Simulink. This is done using MATLAB script to convert the log data into a format that Simulink understands and then replacing the simulated data with this logged flight data. In this way, we can reuse the same tools and analysis techniques that were developed for simulation. Post-flight analysis in Simulink proved to be an invaluable tool for debugging and development. We're able to scope, log, and analyze every part of the algorithm, make appropriate improvements, and then observe what would have occurred in that particular flight, all offline, rather than having to actually conduct a new flight. This video has presented some of my work on UAV close formation flight using MATLAB and Simulink. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge Jeremy Randall for being a safety pilot during the flight tests. But recalling the original motivation, this isn't where the work ends. The work in this video was a stepping stone toward achieving the world's first autonomous airborne docking.
for that, you'll have to check my YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.